Welcome back to Calculations Module, Oxygen Therapy. In this module, we're going to do a variety of oxygen therapy related calculations. Total flow, tank duration, arterial and venous O2 content, the CAVO2 content difference, the alveolar air equation, the A gradient, and calculation of HELOX flow rates. So let's take a look at the very first one, total flow, and we can utilize what's known as the magic box to help us obtain the air entrainment ratios and then to add that together and multiply it by the flow rate to get your total flow. The magic box is basically a tic-tac-toe box, and in the center we place the FiO2, and on the left top corner is 100, and on the bottom right corner we place either 20 or 21, based on what the FiO2 is. If the FiO2 is 40% or greater, we use the 20 value. If it is less than 40%, we use the 21 value. And basically then what we do is we subtract on the top right box, we take the FiO2 minus 20 or 21, depending on what the FiO2 is, and we subtract in this box as well, we take the 100 minus the FiO2. These two values will then give us the air entrainment ratio, which we can add together, multiply by the set flow to get the total flow. So let's look at an actual example. And, and in this example, we have a 40% aerosol face mask running at 10 liters per minute. We need to calculate the total flow. Well, we put 40% in the center box. And we start by, we start by knowing that if it's 40%, then we said the value is 20. So then we subtract the 20 from the 40, and that's this box here, so we have 20. And then we subtract the FiO2 from 100, and we have 60. So 20 to 60 basically breaks down to a 1 to 3 ratio. You would add the 1 and the 3, which would be 4, multiply it by your flow rate of 10, which would give you 40 liters per minute. Let's do that again. The 40 percent, which is here, gives us a value of 20 to use, and we are going to subtract that. We're going to subtract the 20 from the 40, which gives us this value, 20, and we then subtract the 40 from 100, which gives us this value in this box, 60. Again, 20 to 60 is a 1 to 3 ratio. Now the magic box provides you a accurate um, air entrainment flow ratio. However, there's another method that you could utilize that will, that will get you very close to the answer, if not the answer. And there are some established air entrainment ratios based on the FiO2. So if you memorize these, these are actually a very quick shortcut to getting very close to the accurate answer. And for example, 24% uh, um, mask or air entrainment device has a ratio of about 1 to 25. 28 percent, 1 to 10, 31 percent, 1 to 7, 35 percent, 1 to 5, 40 percent, like in the last example, 1 to 3, 50 percent, 1 to 1.7, 60 percent, 1 to 1, and 70 percent, 1 to 0.06. So if you would memorize these numbers, the FO2s that are related to these ratios, uh, for the most part, you could probably do away with the magic box and still get the, uh, the correct answer. Let's move on to tank duration, which is a very simple calculation. And if you look at the calculation, you see the PSIG, which is the pressure in the tank, times a tank factor divided by the flow rate. Well, the tank factor is dependent upon the size of the tank, and different tanks have different factors. Two of the most common factors that you, you will see are related to the more common tanks that we use in respiratory therapy. For an E-cylinder, it is around 0.28, and for an H-cylinder, it's 3.14, which is pi. So you can, you can pretty much use those numbers as your tank factors. And then you just plug it into the equation, uh, the pressure that they give you times the tank factor divided by the flow rate uh, and calculate all that out and you'll get the duration. Now you might have to divide by 60 to get the number of hours if the answer is set in hours. 
Well, let's look at an example. A patient is currently on a 4-liter nasal cannula. The patient needs to be transported using an E-cylinder. The E-cylinder has uh, pretty much a full tank, 2200 PSIG. According to the hospital policy, the tank should not be used once the pressure reading reaches 200. Calculate how long the tank will last. Well, you can see that at the start of the equation, we're taking the 200 off so that we don't let the tank run down to that low of a level and so that would bring us to 2000 times 0.28 divided by 4 which is roughly 152 minutes divide that by 60 and so that tank would last about 2.54 hours in general a 4 liter uh, tank uh, at each cylinder running at 4 liters will last around 2.5 hours well, the next the set of equations here is the arterial and venous oxygen content. And that equation is uh, basically either CaO2 or CVO2, depending on which one you're solving for, uh, taking 1.34 times the hemoglobin times the saturation plus the PO2 times 0 0.003. This first portion of the equation is the amount of oxygen carried or bound to hemoglobin and the second part of the equation is the amount of oxygen that is dissolved in the blood. The arterial oxygen content is a good example of the amount of oxygen available or the delivery of oxygen to the tissues whereas the venous O2 content is the amount of oxygen that is being sent back to the lungs uh, typically that is the, the desaturated oxygen and it's going back to the lungs in order to boost it up and to pick up oxygen. Interesting enough this should be a fairly simple equation to calculate since everything really has to be given. You can't pre-calculate something in order to solve this. The 1.34 is a constant the hemoglobin has to be given, it can't be calculated, the saturation has to be given, as well as the PO2. What you need to remember is obviously the, the point zero zero 0.003, which is the solubility coefficient for oxygen, and the 1.34 factor for hemoglobin. So let's take a look at, again, these different aspects of the equation. You have the constant, you have the hemoglobin, you have the saturation which you want to put in a decimal format when you're doing the calculation you have the partial pressure of oxygen and you have the solubility coefficient which is 0 0.003 you have the exact same formula for venous O2 content the only difference is that you are going to use the venous saturation and you're going to use the venous PO2 so be very careful are they asking you to solve for arterial oxygen content or are they asking you to solve for venous O2 content same formula but you you put different variables in okay so let's try one let's do arterial oxygen content and we have the following uh, variables we have a O2 of 93 a venous O2 of 47 arterial O2 saturation 98, venous saturation 77 percent, and hemoglobin 16. So you can see where it's asking for arterial O2 content, so we put in the arterial numbers, the, the 0.98 and the 93. The 16 is the same in terms of when we do venous. So when we put all that together, you'll see that the normal arterial oxygen content, the value is around 20. Now one thing to remember on an exam is they may ask you, uh, instead of asking for the total oxygen content, they may ask you for the part that's carried or the part that's dissolved. Remember this first part of the equation represents the part that's carried and the second part of the equation represents the part that is dissolved. So pay close attention to the question. Well, let's try the venous O2 content, which again is the same formula, one formula to solve both. But in this situation, we are going to use the PVO2, which is 47, and the SVO2, which is 77. Same formula, we just put in two different variables, the 77 and the 47. And when we calculate it out, in this instance, it's about 16.65. However, the normal CAVO2 is around 15. So the normal arterial O2 content is 20, the normal uh, venous O2 content is 15. 
So having both of those numbers, we can then get the difference. And basically the difference represents uh, a reflection of oxygen consumption, what is used by the tissues, and what is being sent back to the lungs to pick up oxygen. So if the question asks for the CaVO2 difference, we simply calculate our arterial O2 content, our venous O2 content, subtract the, the venous from the arterial, and we have a difference of about 4.64, and that's in vols percent, in other words, milliliters per 100 milliliters of blood, and the normal CaVO2 is around 5, since the arterial is 20 and the venous is 15. Under normal circumstances, your, your CaVO2 difference should be about 5 vols percent. One of the other applications from the CaVO2 difference relates to your cardiac output. And you have to remember that arterial blood is delivered to the tissues where gas exchange at a tissue level takes place, cellular respiration, uh, oxygen is utilized, and then it is then sent back, the hemoglobin then picks up carbon dioxide and still has a lower level of oxygen that is returned to the lungs. So you can see we're sending 20 to your tissues or your cells, we're utilizing about 5 vols percent of the 20, and your venous O2 content which we calculated was about 15%. The thing that you want to remember here is that if your blood flow should slow, in other words, if your cardiac output should fall, then blood will remain uh, longer in the tissues at the cellular level. More oxygen would be extracted from that blood, and therefore your venous O2 content would fall dramatically, making it much harder for your lungs to be able to boost that oxygen level back up. So the relationship is that as your CaVO2 difference increases, becomes wider, so instead of being 5, 20 minus 15, if it was 20 minus 10, if your venous O2 content had fallen to 10, then your, your CaVO2 gradient has increased to 10. So anytime your CaO2 difference increases, it's an indication that cardiac output is decreasing. Let me say that one more time. Any time that your CaVO2 difference increases, it's an indication that cardiac output could be decreasing. Okay, that moves us on to the alveolar air equation, which is one of my more favorite equations. Uh, it actually has uh, predicts a number of things, but let's just take a look at and review uh, what we mean by alveolar air and you can see that we're actually trying to calculate the amount of oxygen available in the alveolus and through diffusion oxygen will go from the alveolus across the alveolar capillary membrane and into the bloodstream and that is where hemoglobin will pick up the oxygen and then it will circulate onto the heart. Okay so here's the equation and it's P big A O2 is equal to your barometric pressure which is normally 760, but keep in mind that on an exam they may give you a different variable and you would have to place that variable in the equation minus the water vapor which is typically a constant of 47 millimeters of mercury and then you multiply that by the FiO2 minus the PaCO2 all divided by 0.8 on this side of the equation now the point 8 is known as your respiratory quotient and that's related to the CO2 removed to O2 consumed and you can break that down to 200 divided by 250 those are the normal values for CO2 removal and oxygen consumption which gives you point 8. You would use point 8 unless it was specified a different respiratory quotient. So let's work through that again P big A O2 take your barometric pressure minus water vapor times your FOS2, get that number, and then minus your PaCO2 over 0.8, get this number, and then subtract the two of them. So let's do an example. Given the following information, calculate the alveolar O2. We have 760 for barometric pressure, we have an FO2 of 60%, we have a CO2 of 40, 
we have an O2 of 88, and we have a hemoglobin of 14 grams per decibel. Well, this is a good example because you have more parameters than you actually need. And when you're taking a registry-like exam, you need to be able to pick out what parameters you need and disregard the parameters you do not need. And in this case, you need the FiO2, and you need the CA, PaCO2, and obviously the barometric pressure. The O2 is not part of the equation, neither is the hemoglobin. Those would be part of the O2 content equation that we did pre. So if you plug your numbers in, which we did right here, and you calculate them correctly, and you can practice this and try it, you should see that the number should be around 377.8 millimeters of mercury. The next question would be, well, what does that mean? Well, to understand what that means, how important the PA, PaO2 value is, you look at the AA gradient. And the AA gradient takes the difference between the alveolar O2 and your measured arterial O2. And you would expect those two to be relatively the same, or very close. However, you'll see that uh, at times they're not the same. And the majority of oxygen that's in the alveoli may not be diffusing into the arterial system, and that's problematic. That would be resulting in something we relate to as shunting. So when we look at the say gradient, we're basically looking at how much is available, that's your P big AO2 right here, to how much is actually diffusing. And like I said, in a healthy individual, the PaO2 should be very small, the gradient, the A gradient. And the, most of the oxygen should diffuse, so you shouldn't have this mismatch. But if your alveolar O2 is very high, and your arterial O2 is very low, then something's occurring in between, and you have some kind of gas diffusion problem. So the AA gradient is actually a very simple calculation. The hard part is to get the P big AO2. Once you have the P big AO2, the alveolar O2, then the arterial O2 is a measured value. It has to be given. It cannot be calculated. So you just plug it in. You take your P big A, and you take your measured arterial O2, and you subtract them. And you can see that in this case, it's very high. Apologize, I hit the key by accident. In this case, the number is very high, and basically, uh, it indicates that the oxygen is not diffusing into the blood, indicating that you most likely have a shunt present. Okay, the last part is your helox flow rates, and helium is, helox is a mixture of helium and oxygen, and because helium is less dense than oxygen, it's used to carry oxygen past airway obstructions. So sometimes we provide helox therapy to asthmatics who are having difficulty breathing. One thing you do have to remember though about helox is that it is less dense than pure oxygen and therefore it has a faster flow. So depending on the helox mixture depends on the factor that you need to multiply by the set flow to get what the actual flow is. If they have a 80 to 20 helox mixture, then you have to multiply whatever the set flow is. Well, let's say it's set at 10. You would multiply 10 times 1.8 to get your actual flow rate. If it's a 70 to 30 helox mixture, then you would use a factor of 1.6 to get your actual flow. So you need to remember those two factors. The 80 to 20 mixture has a 1.8 correction factor and your 70 to 30 has a 1.6 correction factor. Okay, that finishes it up for those oxygen therapy uh, equations. If you go through this module a few times and practice them and review them, I think they'll, they'll become very easy for you and I wish you the best with uh, getting these down.